everyone and welcome to this video which will finally uh, bring you the third and the last part of the tutorial for creating a window box and a matching album featuring the Woodland Friends collection by Graphic45. I want to apologize for um, taking it so long to finish the tutorial. I don't know what happened to me, but I hope you will um, understand that sometimes life happens and it is what it is. So anyways, the third um, and the final part of the tutorial is here. I hope you will enjoy uh, creating along with me. Okay, so let's just um, have a look at the final result. As you can already see, I have embellished the cover of the album and the album is ready now, so I will show you how it looks. And uh, in the tutorial, I will give you the measurements of the designer papers that you will have to prepare for each one of the pages. Um, in the meanwhile, I am just showing you this long tag and the base tag is from Graphic45 and then I used their uh, matching die to uh, die cut the uh, designer paper and um, mat the tag and then I also fussy cut out these birds from one of the designer paper sheets and added them to the tag there. So that's the box. I have added um, just a few layers that I punched out using different sizes of the uh, circle punch um, in there. And I uh, like to add a label with uh, the Graphic 45 Unique Paper Crafting on my Graphic 45 uh, projects that I get to create. Okay, so that's the album. Um, there are a few fussy cut elements from the designer paper sheets here on the cover. And the owl is actually uh, one of the ephemera cards that uh, were uh, not as separate ephemera cards, but a cut out from the cut apart sheet uh, from the paper collection. And then I just layered um, some of the flowers and the mushroom mushrooms here with more branches and foliage um, and used some uh, dimensional foam tape um, to create that additional dimension here on the cover. I have added some uh, corners and um, painted them with a um, coat of Mod Podge, glossy Mod Podge. I really like how that looks. That's the spine. That's the back, similar to the back that I have on the box itself. Okay, so let's look inside. We have a pocket, side pocket here in the inside of the front cover with an additional ca uh, card from the cut apart sheet. Here a picture can be added as well as here and here. Here we have a vertical side pocket with a card inside and we have the same pocket on this side. A few smaller pockets in the middle of the page with uh, uh, slides that I'm showing you how to create in this part of the tutorial. Two more slides that go in this pocket. Okay, so next page has these absolutely adorable squirrels and these flaps open like so and like so and also one flips up. There is a pocket here with the photo mat and there is a pocket here with another photo mat. OK, 
Okay. Then on this side of the page, we again have pockets for the photo mats. Again with the sweet, sweet squirrels. Then on this flap, we have a sliding element just for fun. You can add um, pictures or notes or uh, ephemera cards behind the belly band. And in the uh, window pocket, I have an, uh, a journaling card and some ATCs that I will show you um, closer in the tutorial as well. I'm not showing you how to create them because they're quite simple as you can see, but I will stop and show them um, to you later on. And on this page, once again, we have magnetized closures. You can add some pictures here and to this flap as well. And here we have a journal for notes that also slides out. This is how it looks. And here you have a pocket to hold either this journal or maybe if you want to add pictures, that's also fine. On the back side, um, on the inside of the back cover, there is the same uh, shape um, side pocket with a journaling card and a lovely fussy cut uh, squirrel. Okay, so that's the album ready and done. Uh, what I don't mention in the tutorial, now that I'm thinking about it, is the uh, size for the uh, photo mats that go inside the pocket pages. So the measurement for the black cardstock base is um, 3 and 7 eighths wide by eight and a quarter tall and I just decided to uh, to keep it half half with the designer paper on top and the craft card stock at the bottom so that I could add a picture and I think the picture will have to be well roughly or about three and a quarter by three and a quarter or three by three that depends and then uh, on this section, I could just journal and add my notes describing what's exactly in the picture. Okay, so this mat goes in here. And there is another photo mat in the second pocket. That's how it looks. And I will also give you the measurements for the base of the notebook or this little journal uh, that I have. So when unfolded, the black cardstock piece here measures uh, seven and a half wide by eight and a quarter tall. And of course it will be folded in half so you will just see uh, what kind of pages you want to use on the inside and I just use my stapler um, to um, to bind the pages in this album in this notebook sorry okay so that's it and let's start to embellish our journal with the designer paper I hope you enjoy Let's begin with the sizes of the um, basic paper sizes for different uh, pages of the album. And I will also show you how to create uh, pockets and um, a few fun um, slides for the album if you want uh, to make it a little bit versatile. So... Um, 
the blue paper that you see here on the inside of the front cover measures four and three eighths by eight and five eighths. And then as you can see, I also have a, a pocket here and the designer paper for the pocket measures two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And a little bit later, I will show you how to cut that corner and also will provide you with the measurements of the black uh, cardstock paper uh, for um, the base of that pocket. So moving on, on this page, um, I have um, three pieces of paper. So the blue uh, strips are each one inch by three and three quarters and the uh, piece in the center with the bunnies is three and three quarters by six and a half. And um, yeah, as a matter of fact, on the measurements that you see here, the first one is always the width and the second one is the height. I try to keep it that way so that it's um, less confusing for you. Okay, so on the page uh, on the page here, I also have uh, two pieces of uh, paper. So the strip here is half an inch wide by eight and three quarters inch long. And the paper with the foxes uh, is three and one eighth by eight and three quarters. The piece uh, of paper here is three and three quarters by eight and a quarter. Then um, let's start with this page here. The measurement of the uh, paper strip here is the same as the one on the right hand side and it's a half an inch by eight and three quarters. And this piece here is three and one eighth by uh, eight and three quarters. So on this spread, let's stop a little bit more. So first of all, the measurements for the uh, paper pieces that met the pockets and the pages themselves are the same for the right hand side page and for the left hand side page. So the blue piece of paper that we have here measures um, one and three quarters wide by eight and a quarter long. And then if you remember, we punched out these notches using the envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. So for the designer paper, you match the corner of um, the designer paper with the two and three quarters inch punch mark on the board. So I uh, will provide you with the punch marks for each one of the pockets with the notches for the designer paper this time, because in part two, I provided you with the marks for uh, punching out the notches in the black cardstock. So this time I will only be referring to the punch marks for the designer paper. The print here with the animals on the page itself, the size for that paper piece is two and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And now let's look at the um, base of our page here in the center. You remember that we prepared two pockets, two horizontal pockets. And um, if I'm not mistaken, we already glued down the bottom one. So first of all, to mat both of the pockets with the designer paper, you will need a paper piece which measures three and three quarters wide by one and seven eighths uh, tall. And the punch mark for punching out the notches in the designer paper will be at one and a quarter on your punch board. So as soon as you glue this uh, pocket down, 
you can also prepare a piece of the designer paper which measures three and three quarters wide by three and three quarters tall in a square piece and you will glue it down here at the bottom of the page then you will go ahead and remove the backing from the score tape and you will seal this pocket closed of course we don't forget to burnish as soon as you glue down the square designer paper piece uh, to the bottom of the page you can take your uh, second pocket and remove the backing right now only from the tape at the bottom of the pocket and then line it up between the score lines on the page and position it close to that designer paper piece that we glued down previously. Okay, we'll burnish here and then I will cut a piece of paper for this section of the page. It measures three and three eighths by three and a half and you will glue this paper down to your base page closer to the uh, upper section of it. Okay, once you have that done, you can remove the backing from the flaps um, of your pocket and seal this one closed as well and glue this down as well. Now let's um, glue the vertical pockets here as well. Every time you have a pocket and uh, a paper piece for uh, matting the page, you first glue this section down and then on top of it you glue the flaps of the envelope uh, of the pockets. So I have an ephemera card here that I will put inside that pocket. I will do the same with the pocket on the right hand side of the page. Okay. Burnish so that it stays in place. I also have a card for this pocket right here. And in the small pockets, I have um, a few fun um, slides that I will show you how to create as soon as we're done with uh, uh, paper sizes for matting the pages. Okay, so let's um, move on to the next page and it's this one here okay so we will work on the uh, page on the left hand side first here I have two strips of paper the pink ones and each of them is three and seven eighths wide by half an inch tall both of the pieces here with the squirrels on this uh, side of the page are three and seven eighths by three and five eighths. The paper pieces for the magnetic buckles here, and I have the designer paper on both sides of these flaps. So you will need four of these and they will measure one and one eighth wide by one and three eighths tall. So you will need four pieces of those. Okay. So when you open your flaps like so, here I have two pieces of paper. They are identical and both of them measure three and seven eighths by four and one eighth. The same goes for the paper pieces on 
these flaps as well, three and seven eighths wide by four and one eighth tall. Okay, and then when you open your page like so, we have a few more paper pieces to add here. So let's start with the simple one here on top. It will be three and seven eighths by four and one eighth. And uh, here on the pocket with the notches, you will first cut a piece of paper that measures three and seven eighths by four inches. And then the punch mark for punching out the notch in the designer paper will be at one and a quarter. Absolutely the same measurements will be needed for um, this part of the page. So this paper piece measures three and seven eighths by four and one eighth. And this paper piece for the pocket is three and seven eighths by four. And the punch mark is at one and a quarter. So I have um, put the uh, cardstock pieces in the pockets. I haven't embellished them with any designer paper yet because I think uh, it will be um, too much layers uh, with the picture added in here as well. So I want to keep them plain for now and you can add the designer paper whenever you want. But the uh, size of this cardstock piece is four and one eighth by three and seven eighths. Both of them are the same. Okay, now let's move here. Let's begin with the pink uh, paper piece here in the middle of the page. So it measures three and three quarters by one and one eighth. And the pieces for the pockets here with the squirrels, both measure three and three quarters by three and a half. And you will punch them on the shorter side at one and a quarter. Okay, you will glue them down. Now the cardstock pieces, again, um, plain for now, uh, but the cardstock pieces that go to the pockets measure four inches by three and a half this time. Okay, so we open the page and we will stop um, for a little bit longer on this page since I want to show you how to assemble it. Okay, I will talk about this part of the page a little bit later. Okay, so first of all, you will need a piece of paper that measures three and three quarters by eight and three eighths. Then you will need a strip of paper for this belly band here and this paper piece measures one and three eighths by eight and three eighths. Then for matting the uh, black cardstock piece that we prepared for this page in the part two of the tutorial, you will need a piece of the designer paper that measures two and three eighths by three and three eighths. And I just cut out this um, cute little bunny for this element. Okay, so how we assemble this. First, you can see that your, um, um, you can go ahead and glue the uh, paper strip to the belly band. And here I have a strip of paper. I think I told you the measurements for this one in the part two of the tutorial as well, but if not, this piece of black cardstock measures four inches by one. And uh, it's not very important how exactly you score it because what you will need to do is just to wrap it around your 
belly band like so. Okay, so once I have it wrapped around, I can go ahead and add some glue to this little flap here, like so, and then seal it closed. Make sure that it's straight. Okay, now you see that it slides on the belly band easily. Okay, and now what we will do is, is this. So I prefer to work with the wet glue. If you work with dry adhesive, I don't know you, you just have to think how you do that exactly. And I think it will be easy for you as well, but I apply the wet glue to this whole page first. And then I also apply a little bit of glue to this section of the flap on the belly band. And now I just have to position the designer paper piece on my page like so and without burnishing yet I will just slide that flap of the belly band behind the designer paper piece and only then I will take my bone folder and burnish it down. Next I will just apply some glue to this black cardstock piece that slides on the belly band up and down. I will first position it somewhere in the center, apply the glue, and then center my cardstock piece with the bunny on top of it like so. Now it's just a fun element to have in the album. There is no specific um, rhyme or reason why I decided to do it like that, but I think it's just fun. Okay, so let's move to the section of the page with the window here. So we prepared the window and we matted it with the uh, designer paper piece in the part two of the tutorial, if I remember correct. So there are a few ATC cards that I made for um, this window um, pocket here. You will need a piece of the designer paper that measures three and five eighths by eight and a quarter, and you will go ahead and glue it down to the base of your page here. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and remove the backing from the score tape on the flaps and glue these flaps down to the page. Don't forget to burnish. Okay. So I will have this ephemera card in the pocket as well as these um, ATCs with uh, animals and flowers that I cut out of one of the paper uh, sheets from the Woodland Friends collection. So this one has a squirrel and the frame actually is uh, covered with the Mod Podge. I really like, I really like how, how it looks with a little bit of shine in there. So this ATC has a squirrel on it. This one has an owl. This is the back of the ATC. And this one has this cute raccoon or 
badger. I don't know who exactly that is. Since it is a black and white image. Okay. Maybe raccoon. <laughs> okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, so I just love this cute little bunny that I managed to uh, hide in the branches of the plant in there. And I absolutely love these uh, two little mushrooms. So that's the third ATC and all three of them will go in the pocket right here. It's nice that one who flips through the pages of the album can see them right away through that um, clear window on this page. Okay, so we are done with this one. We will talk about the sizes for the paper layers on this side of the page. This paper piece measures three and three quarters by eight and three eighths. And the paper pieces that you will need for covering the little um, magnetized closures are one and one eighth by one and three eighths. And you will need, as usual, four of them for each um, closure. Then here that strip of green designer paper is 3 8 uh, wide by 8 and 3 8 long. And once again, guys, these are the measurements that I used. Maybe you will decide to embellish your pages in a different way. So, of course, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm just giving you the uh, measurements of the papers that I used in case you want to have the same thing. But we are uh, crafters and we go with our inspiration. So, please, if these measurements don't work for you, uh, go ahead and use something else. Okay, so this um, piece of paper with the bunnies is three and three eighths by eight and three eighths. On the pocket here, the green designer paper piece measures two and three quarters by eight and three eighths. And the punch mark is going to be at two and three quarters of an inch in your punch board. The paper piece for the base of the page measures two by eight and three eighths. And since I already glued it down to the uh, closer to the right hand side of the page with a little border on top and at the bottom and on the right hand side, I can now go ahead and remove the backing from the score tape on the uh, pocket and glue it down on top. My idea was to add a little journal to this pocket and that's why I um, uh, had the quarter of an inch um, thickness added here to the gasset because the little journal or notebook or however you want to call it will be added to the pocket like so. I will just anchor it inside the pocket and with the back page with the back cover of the journal and then everything will be sealed closed like so. Okay, so as you can see the journal has a few embellishments both on the formal uh, front cover if you want to write in the journal and open it from this side and also I added some embellishments um, some cutouts from from the papers to the so-called back cover of the notebook but this back cover is the one that we see once the uh, journal is um, still uh, positioned 
in the pocket on the page. Okay, so <clears throat> that's it. Um, you are more than welcome not to create a journal if that's not how you feel or uh, create it in another way. I thought that uh, making it like this was kind of cute. Okay, so let's get back to the inside of the back cover right now. So this paper piece, the blue one, measures the same as the one on the inside of the front cover. And it is four and three eighths by eight and five eighths. Before I glue it down to the cover, I want to add a pocket. So for my pocket, I took a piece of black cardstock and it measures three and three eighths by six and three eighths. And on one long side and one short side, it is scored at um, half an inch. So the flaps are half an inch wide. As you can see, I applied score tape to these flaps and um, cut off the corner at the right at the uh, intersection of the score lines. So when I fold them on the back, they look like so nice and neat. Now to cut a little corner off the top of this pocket, I uh, first added some marks. So this mark on top uh, is one inch away from the uh, top right corner. If you look at your paper piece like so, and this mark goes two inches down from the right top corner. Okay, so then I connected both of them. And I think I will just use my scissors to cut along that line. Like so. So this is what we have. And that's how our pocket will be on the back, uh, on the inside of the back cover. On the inside of the front cover, you will just have to bear in mind that once ready, it will need to face um, another direction and be like a mirrored reflection of the one that you create right now. Okay, so now this paper piece will measure the same as this one, two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And when you uh, attach it to the black cardstock piece, instead of once again measuring uh, one inch to the uh, um, to the left from the top right corner here, and then two inches down from the top right corner here, you can just go ahead and attach to the black cardstock piece, um, making sure that you have um, a slight border all around. And then you can take your pencil and just make some tick marks on your designer paper piece. And these marks will be, as you can see, um, well, less than one eighth of an inch from the cut out edge of the black paper so that once you cut along this line here you will have the same uh, width of the border that you have all around. I hope it makes sense. Uh, if you don't want to do it like that of course you can go ahead and measure again one inch and two inches exactly in the same way that I showed you how to do for the black cardstock piece. Okay, if you don't want to measure, that's how you do it. I distressed the edges of all the designer paper pieces in this album with the uh, vintage photo distress ink. 
So now I'm ready to go ahead and glue this piece down to the pocket, like so. And I have a thin border all around. Now I will wrap it around the designer paper piece, like so. Add some, without trying not to move it, once you mount that piece on top of the designer paper piece, I will just try not to move it when I flip it to the back and open the flaps and add some glue to the flaps here. I have score tape on the flaps of the pocket because I want these to uh, stick down really nice and right away as soon as I uh, attach this whole piece to the inside of the back cover. You can go ahead and attach more score tape in these areas of the designer paper. I will not do that. I like to add wet glue to the rest of this uh, paper piece and use score tape only on the flaps of the pocket. And now I will make sure that I keep it straight and burnish to glue it down nicely to the inside of the back cover. I have already cut out this cute squirrel from one of the uh, pages of the uh, paper collection and I just want to add it here to the pocket like so and this card will go in the pocket here. Okay. So now let's get back to the pockets on our first page and talk about the slides. As you can see, this slide has a black cardstock base and then a piece of the designer paper to mat the front of the slide. To make the slides, you will need a few things. First of all, you will need a piece of the black cardstock and it measures, in my case, uh, three inches by three and a quarter. The designer paper piece is slightly smaller and it's two and seven eighths wide by two and seven eighths tall. So it's a square piece. I remember it now. I created these uh, a few weeks back to be true. So I'm trying to recall how exactly I did that. Okay. And as you can see, I glued it down slightly along the uh, bottom edge of the uh, black cardstock piece, leaving a little border from the bottom and from the right and left hand sides. Okay. So um, I think I added just some drops of glue to the bottom corners of this piece. Yep. Like so just to keep it there. You can use baby washi tape, but I find it more convenient to use just tiny, tiny drops of wet glue for this purpose. Now, you will also need the frame punch board to create the cute opening with the rounded corners here in the center of our slides. And you will need an envelope punch board and in my case, guys, it's a mini envelope punch board because I like how the slide looks um, with a quarter inch tab here 
rather than with the 3 8 one, which is created by the larger standard, standard size of the envelope punch board. So if you're working with the um, standard size envelope punch board, you will have to keep that in mind and add, I think, another eighth of an inch to the taller um, side of the black cardstock piece in that case. So instead of the uh, three and a quarter inch tool, you will prepare a cardstock piece that will be three and three eighths inch tool. Okay. Um, other than that, the um, steps will be the same. So I will first glue the corners of that designer paper piece to the black cardstock and now I will punch the uh, opening. I will put these bars at half an inch on top and on my right hand side in the punch board, in the frame punch board and punch my frame one time here. Then I will rotate the paper piece like so and punch again. And this is what we'll have so far. Now I will have to move the bar here to the three quarters inch position and this one I will still keep at half an inch and making sure that I uh, slide the paper all the way in till it stops there in the corner I will punch again that's what I'll have and then I will flip the whole piece like so. Once again, I will make sure that it slides all the way up to the corner there and punch. That's what we have so far. We don't need the frame punch board anymore for now. And I will next need my craft knife and something to protect my working surface because we will have to cut out the sponged out piece and of course you can use your frame punch board this uh, section here to cut this area out but I just like to use a ruler and a craft knife for that purpose. So this section is now out and I can take my mini envelope punch board and punch out that tab. So I think I will make it the same way as on this slide in the center. So I will align this corner of my slide with the very first uh, notch here on the uh, punch board and punch it out then flip and punch out again so that's what we have and now I just have to use either my scissors or a craft knife to cut these tiny sections off okay this is what we have now I can use this corner rounder and round the corners of my slide so that they look like this. Next I will take a piece of tracing paper or vellum or maybe if you want to create these uh, with the acetate insert that's okay too. Just remember to use the 
um, archival or st stays on ink for stamping on the acetate. But in my case, this tracing paper piece is two and three eighths by two and two and a half. Okay, I think two and a half by two and a half could also be fine. I think in my case the measurements are like this only because this is the piece that I had um, ready. Okay, so two and a half by two and a half is also fine. And I will use um, this stamp that I have found in my stash from the uh, Stamperia uh, Forest Stamps set. Um, that's the product code in case you need that. I think there were a few sets that went with this um, paper collection. Okay, so I will just use the uh, Memento ink and it's a rich cocoa color. So I will go ahead and stamp these berries here. They're really beautiful. And while the ink dries on that tracing paper piece that we just stamped, you can take your distress ink and distress the edges of that opening in our slide. Then I will lift the paper piece. And here you can either take it off completely. And if you applied those tiny, tiny drops of liquid glue, it will be easy for you to take this piece off. Just remember how exactly it was positioned on top of the black cardstock because the um, the opening here is stamped on both of them together so that they match exactly. Okay. Um, all right. So let's put it like so. Then I will take my wet glue and apply Just some little amount of that glue around the opening and put my stamped image there on top. Burnish. Okay. And what's left is only to add some glue to our designer paper piece and glue it down to the slide. And when you do that, just make sure that once again you match the uh, opening on the designer paper piece with the opening on the black cardstock. Burnish. Okay. So this is how it looks. And you can, um, as I did here, add some labels to your slide uh, to make it look more interesting. Okay, so I will add this stamped label here in the corner. And I have a little number that I will add to the bottom corner of the slide. And I think our slides are now ready to be put in the pockets of the album. Maybe you can even add some um, eyelets in there to the, to the tabs of the slides and add some charms. Not, a, not not the bulky charms, but um, those ones 
which are more on the flat side because we only have one eighth of an inch um, thickness or depth to our page here so you don't want to make it too bulky okay so yeah the slides are ready and the album is done so I truly hope you will give it a go and I hope that you enjoyed uh, creating this project with me once again I'm sorry that it took <laughs> a long time but the result is here and it will make someone happy which is the most important thing so if you have guys any questions please let me know in the comment section down below I will try to get back to you as soon as possible oh and by the way yeah that's my second um, window box that I created earlier I think I showed you this one but if not it has um, a journal it has a journal in it that's how the journal looks like so there is a tag in here and this is how the pages look Okay, I guess that's all of it for today. Thanks for joining me here. I am very excited to read your comments. Not only for this tutorial, but in general. So I really appreciate you taking time to comment. That makes me very happy. And, um, yeah, so while I'm flipping through this still, I will wish you guys a great day and see you soon in the upcoming video tutorials. Bye.